Hello, everybody. So today we're talking about family conflict resolution. And the question isn't if conflict will happen in your family, but the question is when, how often, and how you'll resolve it. Being angry or having disagreements isn't a sin, but how we deal with it often is. So choosing good communication to express our thoughts lovingly, focusing on family healing, all of that will have a completely different outcome than being focused on making sure people know you're right and that they're wrong. Your job isn't to protect yourself. Your job is to make sure that your family is loved, encouraged, supported, and even equipped to handle issues effectively, especially when they are on their own. We're going to chat about Ephesians 4 today, so grab your Bible and journal, and we're going to dig in. But first, please click like and subscribe so you can be notified when other videos pop up. Since this week, we're going to be working on family communication a lot and how to set your family up for healing and success. So Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, gives us guidelines of the kind of tone of voice we're supposed to be using when we communicate, and that's really important. This applies to all relationships, but even more so for your family, since that is the area where most conflict occurs. We're supposed to communicate with humility gentleness, patience, tolerance, even it says in Ephesians, and we're to be diligent to preserve peace. Now, this isn't talking about dangerous situations. We do not tolerate sin or violence or cruelty, but we do allow people to have a voice in normal situations. We may disagree, but if your children, your spouse, if they're always silenced or if they disagree with you, you're, you need to make sure that they don't stop talking to you at all. Tolerance means you don't allow yourself to be walked on. No one in the family should be silenced. You all have a voice. And the more open you can talk about things, the more you can lovingly dig down to the roots and truth. It opens up opportunity for truth to be spoken and healing to begin. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16 talks about how Building up our family or any relationship really requires us to be steady, not tossed around by confusion, but speaking the truth in love. But what does speaking the truth in love look like? It looks like listening, giving people room to share and maybe even be wrong sometimes without shame or repercussion. It looks like everyone's thoughts and point of view get heard. Now this might scare you a little. What if they say something really hard or very wrong? What it means is, if you don't lose control or get shocked, you may actually hear their heart. And then you're going to be allowed room to speak into the conversation. You might get to have your say too, because you didn't shut them up. How do you bring up conversations in your family? Is your motivation to prove yourself right? Or is it to get people talking and growing and learning? Ephesians 4, 17 through 24, talks about how our communication can either come from a hard and calloused heart, or it can come from the pursuit of righteousness, holiness, and truth with love. So it's all about your attitude behind your action that's going to determine how your conversations are going to go. So before you open up your mouth to even start the conversation, think, why do I want to talk about this? Will it help my family grow and heal? Or do I just want to look right? Do I just look, want to look smart? Will it bring us together? Or will it cause division? Because life and death are in the power of your tongue. And Ephesians 4.29 tells us to make sure that our language builds people up. Once your words are out, you can't bring them back in. So you need to be intentional with your words so that all those words only edify. That doesn't mean that they all agree with each other. That's not what edification means. It means that they only bring light and truth in life. So disagreement is okay as long as you resolve it and allow a voice and listen to each other. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 tells us to choose kindness and forgiveness 
So if you have used your words incorrectly in the past, today is the day to change that. Tell your spouse and children that you want to do it differently from now on than you've ever done it before. You want to start with easy conversations that aren't going to blow people up, and then you can move to more difficult things as you get this skill down. Listen intently without interruption and make sure everyone knows that their opinion matters. You're going to start to see more confidence and trust in the ones you love the most, and you're going to have a much more peaceful home as you practice these skills.